everybody, it's Allison, stlprochurch.com. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Today's video, we're going to be doing the T quadrant for the most part. So that would be your hip flexor, your central hamstring, but we're also going to touch some of the other hamstrings. And then your abductors, which bring the leg away from the body, out, out to the side, and then your adductors, bringing them together. And I also wanted to touch a little bit on um, the adductors versus medial hamstring. They do wrap up around each other. So sometimes it's hard to tell, like, which one's tight. Is it my, is it my adductor that's tight, or is it my medial hamstring that's tight? So we're going to go over that. Um, as usual, we'll work within your range of motion. If something hurts, stop doing it. And always move and resist. Okay, let's come to the math. I have, I did not tell you this, but I have a chair. So stop this video and go get a chair. You might not need it, but um, you might. And then also a rolled up towel or a blanket or even, you could even use your mat and just roll it up. That would work just fine. So we are gonna do little calves today. So we're gonna start with why, okay, so how do you know, like is it my inner thigh, my, my adductors, or my medial hamstring that's tight? So, the yoga pose that I'm thinking about is this one, where you're um, open, and then you're going to bend forward and take your hands down. So some of you, just standing this way, might be pretty tight for you. One way to figure out if that's your adductors or your hamstrings is just bend forward. Which is tighter for you? Is this a problem, or is just being here a problem? Is this a problem? Do you feel tension there? And if you wanted to make this into a resistance stretch, it's an excellent one. Just squeeze your inner thighs together and move from side to side until you feel a stretch. It is a little bit of a quad workout, that I will say. Push your hips back as you go. Kind of want to do this so that your hips are about where your heel is, maybe even farther back. But So as you come to side to side, like the knee is going to come out of the toe just a little bit. Um, but we don't want it to come out too far. So do you feel tension here? I do, because I'm tighter in my adductors than my medial hamstring. So then, to see if it's the medial hamstring, turn the toes out a little bit. And we're going to bend uh, forward and see what you feel. You feel tension in the back of the leg, inner back of the leg, probably. Maybe even to the side of the back of the leg. That means your lateral hamstring's pretty tight. And then we're going to rotate the hips to the right. Squeeze your inner thighs together and then bend forward at a 45 degree angle. Kind of stick, stick your butt out a little bit. And that would be that medial hamstring. So if you feel tension there, well, that's what's holding your back. So I would say work your medial hamstring and also the balancing muscle, which would be your quad, your lateral, lateral quad. So that is the X quadrant. We, today we're working on the T quadrant, which has to do with the adductors. Um, so we have been stretching our adductors by turning the toes in <laughs> and bending from side to side. So that is one way to get in there and do it. Um, if you're flexible or if you need the support of a chair, just take that chair out front and work it from side to side. I have also done um, many, many, many videos where um, I take my socks and put my socks on. And you could use a chair or um, if you've got carpet, you'll need some gliders. So if you don't have carpet, if you have carpet and you don't have gliders, you're just going to squeeze your inner thighs together, work from side to side, and you can come down lower and lower. I've seen in yoga where they go, they go all the way down. Now I've got my toes turned out at this point, and back together. I'm squeezing my inner thighs together the entire time. So what I got my socks out to do is holding this chair, and I bring my feet apart. This is for those of you who have hardwood floors. I'm going to open and then pull together. So that's a great one for strengthening and stretching your adductors. It's a little bit of a workout, I'm not going to lie to you, core-wise. 
Now, what happens if you get here, you get out to the side, and you get a cramp in here? Well, that means you need to stretch your abductors, which we're going to do in a standing way. So grab hold of your chair. And I find most people can do this. Not everybody can cross their ankle over in a, seat, in a supine position, so on their back. But usually standing up, we can get it crossed over there for the most part. Haven't had too many people that can't. So I'm going to press this ankle into my thigh, my right ankle into my thigh. And as I do, I'm going to stick my butt out behind me and bend the left knee to come down until I feel a stretch. And then I'm going to push this left ankle a right ankle into my left thigh to come back up again. So this is your abductor stretch. You're standing figure four. Um, in yoga, usually they tend to do it kind of like that and just hold for a long period of time. We are moving and resisting. So we're adding the resistance by pressing the ankle into the thigh. And when you come up, I really want you to press the ankle into the thigh so that we can use this leg kind of as a lever to just kind of pry that, that left leg open. So it's not so much tension on the left leg. And hang on to something for balance if you want. And then we will switch sides. I haven't been counting. I kind of do these until I feel start to feel like, you know, loosened up. Although I've been doing a lot of glute work lately, so um, I'm super tight in my glutes. <laughs> I think uh, a lot of people have been working on their glutes a lot. And, and you know, you work them um, to tighten them up, but you've, you've got to stretch them too. <laughs> Otherwise, you're never going to grow. So let's do the other side. So I've got my left ankle crossed over my right thigh. I am pressing the entire time and press the left ankle into the thigh. So that's going to help me. It's going to give me more resistance. It's also going to get this knee open a little bit. So press the ankle into the thigh and then stick your butt out and bend your right knee and then push the ankle into the thigh to come back up again. So we're just coming down until you feel a stretch. which for me isn't very far. I know when I did a lot of yoga, I used to um, really, really overstretch in, in this figure four. I don't anymore because if you are constantly overstretching it, you can end up with some problems with your sacrum. And nobody wants uh, sacroiliac dysfunction, which is what it can lead to if you keep overstretching it all the time. So we want to make sure that all those muscles are just, they are intact. And they are able to pull in and out of this stretch. So don't overdo it. I know a lot of people are, oh, I want to get into this balance pose. We're down on the floor and doing this. Well, you know what? Let's just, let's just work the stretch for now. <laughs> and um, see what kind of range of motion we can get, rather than just yanking the muscle into a deeper stretch. So that's my personal opinion. And then next, we're going to go into hip flexor. There are a couple different ways you can do. Usually, I do the kneeling hip flexor stretch, but today we're just going to do a standing one. I'm going to take these socks off so we don't slide around. Um, and this is something, that if, if you are a yogi, and I know sometimes they do, um, they'll do a high lunge like this in yoga which is great. It always opens up my hip flexor a lot, but I feel like I could be getting more out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze my, I'm going to pull my um, feet towards each other. I'm going to do the opposite of sticking my butt out. So get that posterior tilt going. And that should be enough to actually, you should feel it here, probably. So pulling the uh, feet towards each other and then posterior tilting. And then you're going to come, you're going to bend this front knee and bend the back knee as well. Come down. I feel this all the way in my quad and then back up again. If you want to take this farther, well, you can. Remember to keep that posterior tilt going. And we're going to shift forward and straighten the back leg. 
and then back it up and come back out of it. So this is a great way, uh, you could even do this like at an airplane, on an airplane in the aisle if you wanted to. If you are getting cramped up from sitting too long. I've been known to do this. And um, then we're going to move on to the other side. But first, before we move on to the other side, I want to demonstrate how to do this sitting. Because it is possible. Um, I'm just sitting on the corner of a chair. I'm going to bring one leg behind me. I am going to, so my naturally, I just want to spill forward, but I'm going to resist the urge to do that. So I'm going to pull my belly in, which is going to cause my back knee to bend. Okay. So we've already got the contraction going, right? And then you're going to start to straighten the back leg. So that's your stretch. As you straighten the back leg, we don't want the belly to spill forward. So just do it a little bit. And you should get a hip flexor stretch. Okay? So that's for those of you who are just really not wanting to do all this activity, standing. I mean, this standing stuff can get pretty physically taxing. So. All right, so we'll do the other side. I'm in high lunge. My back heel is lifted, unlike warrior one. Warrior one, the hips are turned to the front, but the back heel is down, and the back foot is like two-thirds turned. You could do it that way, but it's going to make it really awkward to bend the knee. So I'm going to say turn all the way to the front. Hips are squared. And then, as you can see, I'm leaning forward. We want, I'm going to do that, so pull back. Get the tailbone tucked underneath you. Imagine your feet coming together, your inner thighs coming together. Posterior tilt. So this is an anterior tilt. The top of my hip bones are coming forward. This is a posterior tilt. My hip bones are going back. So we want that. And then we're going to come down. Try to maintain that posterior tilt and come back up again. This is not easy to do. It's not easy for me. And one of the reasons that I wanted to give the chair option is because I've got a little toe problem in my right foot, so I can't bend my toe that much. Um, so it might be easier for me to just push and come forward and get that stretch and then back up again. So we're coming down. I'm, I'm posterior tilting, so do the opposite of sticking your butt out. Shift forward, try to straighten that back leg, and then back it up. Now, I do realize that when you come down and you shift forward, your knee is coming out over your toe just a little bit. That's okay. It's not like this is a super duper. We're not doing a lot of weight bearing. Um, and actually, the knee coming out over the toe is a functional movement. We do it every time we go downstairs. So it's not a, sort, it's not a terrible thing. We'll do one more. And then I'll demonstrate the chair thing again. So chair. sit, turn. I'm going to imagine this knee pulling forward. Do the opposite of sticking my butt out. And then I'm going to start to straighten the back leg. So it's just a little movement. It's not a lot. That's about as far as I can get, get it back there without my belly spilling forward. Whew. Okay. And then next, we're going to work on central hamstring. So central hamstring, I'm going to turn my chair this way. If you don't have a chair and you're trying to do all this stuff without a chair, don't worry about it. Um, you don't really need a chair, I guess. Um, you could just do pyramid with like one foot forward. So I'm going to put my right foot forward and my left foot back. I'm going to square my hips. I'm going to lift my chest. I'm going to stick my butt out. I'm pushing my right foot into the floor as I, as I come down. I am not locking out that front leg. I'm going to come down until I feel a stretch, and then I'm going to pull right back out of it again. So I'm leaning forward and coming out. What I was going to do with the chair is I'm going to add a little bit more and put this blanket or your rolled up mat or, um, or a towel 
in front and I'm going to put this my right foot up on it. So it's lifted a little bit. Square my hips. I am already holding on to the chair. I'm going to push the ball of my foot into that um, towel. Push it. Come forward. Hold onto the chair and then kind of push out of it with the ball of your right foot to come back out. So this is sort of like a single leg deadlift in a way, but our back foot is planted. Single leg Romanian deadlift, straight leg. My parrot is making all kinds of noise, so I'm sorry, I apologize. And now he stopped because he knows. Oh, what a good stretch. Okay, and then um, switch legs. Another way that you could do this is just put your foot up on the chair. That way you don't have to lean over so much. So I'm driving. This is the opposite side. I'm going to kind of switch it up on you and show a different, different thing that you could do. So I'm driving my heel into the chair, and I'm going to pull forward and then keep pulling forward as I back my hips up and lean into the stretch. This is another way that you can do the central hamstring, pulling the heel forward and then backing it up. Pulling forward and backing up. I do not get as an intention stretch with this one, but um, for some of you, that might be better. Because I kind of consider myself to be somewhat flexible. Compared to a lot of people anyway. It's all relative, right? So again, you could do it this way. I'm squaring my hips, um, turning them to the front. I'm lifting my chest and I'm pushing with that left foot into the mat, coming forward, and then reaching back, and then coming back up again. And then after we do this, we are going to stretch the calves. Oh my. This just feels so good to me. I could do it all day, but for some of you, I know it might not. <laughs> and again, you can always take it back to that heel pulling forward toward you and then pulling back and leaning into the stretch. So that's another way that you could get into the central hamstring. I usually like to do the hip flexor before the central hamstring if I can, just because it takes some of the jamming out of the front and then you're able to get a little bit deeper and more freely into the stretch. Okay, so we're going to do calves to end. So I'm going to move these, this blanket, I should have just a rolled up towel back, and I'm going to put the balls of my feet on it. I'm going to lean forward and position myself above the chair. I'm going to lift my heels, shift forward just a bit, and then shift back, and I'm going to push my hips back, and I'm going to lower my chest down. Shifting forward and up, and then back down, and slowly lower chest down toward the floor. If you want to take this a little bit farther, as you lower your heels, you're going to lift your toes up off of the towel and tilt your tailbone up as you press the chest down toward the mat. That is a wonderful, wonderful stretch, I have to say. All right, and that's it for today. Some standing uh, stretches for you to do. Um, hope you enjoyed this, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.